And, and uh, hello everyone, my name is Harish. Uh, so I, as uh, uh, Sandy introduced, uh, I've been teaching with uh, Schema for a while. So today my topic is uh, more towards uh, teaching in a Sino Foreign Joint Institute. But as you have seen, right, uh, from, from, from the morning, uh, a lot of uh, very experienced speakers have detailed the too many guidelines. And then they're very systematic in it. So I think my uh, talk will be more like my personal experience of teaching and what I think is a trend or what I think could work, okay? Uh, and, and in case you cannot hear me, please just let me know and I will try to see what's the problem with the connection. Okay? So uh, the, the, my talk right, has only four simple key points. Right? Uh, first is my background and my thinking direction. So probably teaching is very aligned to the teacher's thinking and life philosophy as such, in my opinion. right? It's my personal opinion again. Uh, I, if you like it, feel free to take it. A lot of my resources are freely available. If you don't like it, tell me why you don't like it and probably I can fix it. And uh, and and if you think there's a better way, show me and I will, I'm more than happy to learn. So that's my uh, opinion, right? So first I want to talk about a little bit about my background so you know where I come from, like, I mean, intellectually, right? Other than this, I also want to talk about my research direction, then my teaching and my philosophy to teaching, why I do what I do. And then my experience uh, in teaching in Sino Foreign Joint Institutes. And then what I think is the trend in, in my area of teaching, right? And how I want to align and better match this trend to not just build value for uh, my, my institution, but also to my personal value, like, like uh, create a sub ecosystem for myself, which I'm very interested in, right? And then some contact information in case uh, some of you are shy, feel free to send me a message because uh, I observe this a lot. Generally, when I have a talk, there are a few questions, but after the talk, God, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a list of messages. So yeah, I'm pretty okay with this, okay? Uh, so, okay, the first thing, right? Uh, how to pronounce my name? You know, in English, there's a keyword called hurry up. People say hurry up, right? So my, my name is exactly like this. So hurry is the first part and ish is like, uh, the, the second part so it's harsh okay so now you know how to pronounce my name uh, so my education background is i have two master degrees one in science and one in engineering and then i have a phd from Tsinghua. Uh, other than this i have had uh, so the space was limited so i have considerable amount of like almost four years of work experience in america europe and so on before my phd so uh, I come from a very uh, humble background. Uh, so what I have to do is every time I graduate from a high school or something, I have to go to the uh, industry, get some money to study, right? And go back. So this has positively contributed to my uh, industrial experience. So e before every degree and after every degree, there will be some working experience for some company. And I think with time, as my learning increased, the quality of company and the quality of work increased, the quality of countries and the quality of environments I could access increased, right? Uh, so the, my major break was almost in, in the year 2014-15, somewhere here, uh, where I got an internship to, to work in a very famous teacher's lab in Tsinghua. And then after this, I, I tried to learn more from him as a, as a research assistant. Uh, and then I joined a PhD in the year 2017. I was the fastest to graduate in my department uh, in, in two years, four semesters, PhD. Uh, so yeah, so that's my background. Other than this, right, I, I've been teaching for quite a bit of time, uh, starting with my teaching experience in Tsinghua and then as a lecturer first when I was my PhD student and then uh, as an adjunct assistant professor after I graduated and then in Shanghai Jiatong University uh, where I was a part of. Uh, other than this, I have taught in schema at almost all capacities, like uh, uh, schema joint institute and schema sucho, where I've taught French students the master degree course last semester. Uh, and other than this, I also teach uh, Emily on business school uh, this winter as a visiting professor. So my point is I've taught Chinese students and uh, Sino in, in, in Sino foreign uh, kind of institutional setup. Both of this is my major portfolio. Uh, currently, I'm a tenure track assistant professor. Uh, so firstly, to understand my research direction, right? It's very uh, simplified in a certain sense. My major area of work is technology forecasting. So this is the recent paper, 2021 paper published in IEEE Transactional Engineering Management. You can have a look at it. So probably it will give you a direction. 
And then this is the one that's published in 2020, uh, Resource Conservation and Recycling. So this will pretty much show you what kind of technology forecasting tools that I am interested in. And other than forecasting itself, right? If I get the government funds, I also build technology. So you can see it from our 2019 work where I built a technology of uh, virtual therapy uh, for a hospital, uh, a real hospital. So my industrial application is contingent to me getting the funds. If I don't get the funds, I'm pretty happy just doing technology forecasting. But if I have the funds, I'm more than happy to get my hands dirty, get the clinical trial process done. If it's a medical uh, project, if it's an industrial project, I'll go wear the hard hat and get things done. But that's contingent to that simple point. Other than this, I have a teaching portfolio. Uh, started teaching in 2018. Uh, so I, I've taught a couple of courses. The interesting ones that are uh, uh, fundamentals to my uh, discussion today uh, are the courses that I've taught for uh, uh, Schema and uh, uh, Mleon, that is uh, Sino Foreign Institute again. So my first course with Schema was called Advanced Computer Business Application and I had quite a bit of learning which I will talk about very briefly today. Uh, you, you can probably, if something is useful, you can take it and, and probably build it, okay? But build on top. So, so uh, it was very interesting for me and uh, I think uh, in the end, uh, the, the course reached a stage where students liked it so much. Our course evaluation is uh, among top 5% in the department when we close, right? And that was the first time I teach for a batch that big, almost uh, 180, 170, 200 students, I don't remember. So, so it was a big batch of students and I, I think the, the result was very overwhelming and it made me feel like uh, very interested. And then the next course I teach was like relational database. I'll talk about this too. And for Schema Sucho, I teach the AI for IB course. Uh, I, uh, if you see in the course teaching hierarchy, right, the courses that get the maximum social impact were these two, right? But the courses that make me personally very happy or like fulfilling are these two. So I will talk about what was the difference and my perspective and you can like probably see what, what, what uh, works. Next semester I'll be there. Uh, I will teach a, a course called Data Structures Using Python Programming. This is from Nanjing Audit University site for the Joint Institute. It has nothing to do with Schema. I mean, it, it's in the Joint Institute, but it's from the NAU side. And the, from Schema side, I will be teaching a repeat of the advanced computer business application course just to like kind of show you okay so my teaching philosophy right i'm i i think i started as a programmer in 2008 and i'm good at programming and using tools so that's one side of my spectrum on the other side of the spectrum right what drives me to teach is something that have i i, I have quite a bit of travel experience uh, so in in singapore right in 2016 um, i was in the in the shuttle bus that drives from the the plane to the the, the 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 boarding station right so in that in that place i saw something like a board a very beat up board by the authority it says there is a safe sensor please stay away from a door and somebody already striked it up and said there is a safe sensor please stay away from the door right this already happened right and this got my attention i took my pencil and i said there is a safety i add this part sensor please stay away from the door uh Ojeda, i think that this is super cool because i think it is like uh the, the system building something and the people fixing it so this concept back back then i don't know how to quantify it now i know it's called citizen development of sorts wherein every stakeholder in society helps to increase uh, the system's uh, efficiency or its friendliness and so on and so forth maybe they don't get much from it except for the satisfaction of helping to make a better system or maybe sometimes it comes out as a business so i i i, I like it uh, and i can quantify it much better now back then i just think it's so cool i take a photo and this is probably what i as a teaching philosophy i carry uh, i i try to uh, achieve a very minimum standard and uh, based on the levels of students right they can do more innovation on top or just leave it there and uh, get a score something like this so i follow this kind of iterative uh, learning iterative development or iterative thinking process using tools of course 
more quantified in a certain sense right so that's my basic philosophy anyway we we came up with this idea of uh, teaching a writing course as a iterative design derivative like like it's a design uh, instead of a language component i take this course uh, because it's a required course to graduate in jiwa right during my phd time and i ha- absolutely hated this course because uh, it was taught by the english department uh, there was like a lot of books that were talking about vocabulary how to speak in english how to write in english it was a language centered course and for me academic writing has nothing to do with language it has uh, to do with ideas and expression of ideas which are totally disconnected to language beyond a point right so when i passed this course that day i knew that i want to do it but i want to do it my way right so when i proposed this course i i said i will not teach it in a classroom but i will teach it in the lab that teaches programming right so so the because i already had some reputation of teaching some courses the school was kind enough to let me teach and and it was so interesting because this course became so popular uh, people pro- i was teaching it uh, for the school but people from industrial engineering people from chemistry and so on like like a very diverse set people from philosophy the physics they, all of them came together to kind of take this course and it was very interesting in a certain sense uh, so that's a very fond memory of mine as it comes to teaching uh, coming back to nanjing uh, the joint institute at nau right so in the academic uh, in the first course i teach right it was advanced computer business application the idea of this course had two parts excel which is microsoft excel and connecting it with visual basic okay visual basic is a programming language for uh, people without this kind of a background uh, so what happens is you can do much much more uh, when you connect vb with excel and you can do some amount of data sciences and data pre processing on it and we wanted to teach them accounting related functions and uh, functions that can use formulas and so on right initially it was very difficult for me because uh, the excel was uh, seen as more of a calculator by the students and and i was probably doing uh, it incorrectly for the first few weeks wherein i was trying to go uh, tip to tip on functional level because the only students i have taught before were from chingwa and jauta right and they are more uh, towards uh, the the mathematical side of things instead of the application side of things right so so i kept this dynamics on and and it was very um very hard because students found it difficult and our break came uh, i i met a really amazing teacher called teacher e uh, he's from the nau side and of course there were many teacher coordinators but this teacher stood out because one day we were just sitting in the office after course and what we did was we came up with the idea of uh, building a game using using uh, using visual basic right just to some basic element and building a game the idea here so this is me and the teacher e from the chinese nau side uh, trying to build a game in the office at uh, at the joint institute uh, what we wanted to achieve was we wanted to kind of change the perception of students to see excel as not rows and columns but as a as a as a canvas where they can do much much more like b- build their creativity something like this right and then we took this to the class and we said oh okay step 1 to build this is to build the button and write this kind of code to activate this kind of function right it became so interesting uh, of course the idea was we didn't expect people will build games out of excel but what happened to us everybody started building games this is like just to show you one of the in class like this student is like 18 years old right and she built tetris on excel you see that that's excel sheet right and so many games somebody built like the gambling game on it somebody built the the games on it but the point here was what was achieved was effective translation of uh, excel being seen as as uh, as a row and a column and a formula based structure to something that is a canvas where you have the idea you can build a design and translate this design into a working model that can achieve some results uh, you see that kind of code so so this was very unimaginable for me uh, when i was when i began teaching this course for them to write and a uh, design and translate that design into code this made me feel so excited right and uh, i wrote a very detailed article about it in linkedin which had like a lot of views and na uh, the schema side right from nau they even wrote an article in chinese about what we were trying to do back then right you can you can probably see this article and it's very more detailed actually than i'm what i'm talking about so 
the next semester, right? Uh, I, I taught the relational database course. And in this course, uh, that time what happened was there was like some, uh, how do you say, uh, COVID disruption. So some classes were happening online and some classes were ha happening offline. So it will be like two weeks and suddenly there will be some cases in Shanghai. So I'm li I live in Shanghai, so I cannot travel to Nanjing, something like this. So, so what happened was there was like some disruption for on and off class. So what I did was I, uh, the, again, I meet another wonderful teacher. Of course, there are a list of teachers, but this teacher is teacher Chen. Uh, he's really one of my really, really good friends uh, in, in, in NAU. And I'm going to teach a data, data structure course with him from the NAU side. And I want to probably write a book about it. We coordinate all the time. So my, my interesting thing here is what we did was I, I started making some videos about uh, some steps uh, to follow when it comes to translation of design to a prototype for building a database, right? Like storing information, right? And I started posting it on my WeChat and I wanted to see if, if our students are consuming. The students were like 140 or 150, I don't remember exactly. But if you see here, right? The consumption pattern, 1.4K. So this, this video is like a total structure that starts with design and goes to the integration, like a whole life cycle the biggest video, like I think uh, uh, 17, 14 minutes, I don't remember. So here you see it's 1.4K. And if you see the other content that I post, I post other content just so I can compare how well I'm doing on the technical content, right? Just me eating in a restaurant and that's 35 views because my total friends in the list is like 70 or something. So, so my point is, uh, again, my friends are not consuming my content, but the point here is I can see the interesting difference between the kind of videos, the complexity of the videos and, and, and the consumption pattern of my students for that videos, right? This kind of puts me on the edge to what I should be doing better in class and watch uh, like, like on class and off class has some like learning that they share with each other in a certain sense. So this is what I learned in the, in the second course that I taught right uh, so again as i said teacher chen was very very supportive he helped me understand a lot of student dynamics uh, and uh, these are other two teachers i am very grateful for them too but the teacher chen really my biggest uh, earning is finding teachers like teacher e and teacher chen who i can collaborate and build stuff with okay so this is the ai for ib course the total uh, for schema sucho that i taught it's a master course and uh, it's uh, entirely for the french students right in this what i did was i back then linkedin was still allowed in china right and i used to uh, discuss some aspects about the course and uh, help build the design or something called the analytics pipeline right Again, my point here is, uh, again, everything that I teach is centered to making the business, the young business leader of tomorrow, a citizen developer. So when he's sitting in a technology company, maybe his background is uh, auditing, but he doesn't feel overwhelmed by the technical complexity of things. He can logically listen to what's happening in the technical committee and then probably start putting it in his own building blocks that he learned from the class. So this is one thing I want to learn. And, he, and the day he's able to do that in a big meeting, right? He will send me a message. I think that is my earning from this whole exercise of doing many things. And this is happening quite a lot recently. Uh, let me show you later. So what happened was in this course, what I did uh, differently was I invited a data scientist from Edifex. It's a, it's a medical company in America. I invited him as uh, my teaching assistant. Uh, of course, uh, this guy is, uh, is, a, is a core uh, data scientist and makes a lot of money, right? So when I invite him, I think probably one hour of his fee will be the total fee that I will make from the whole course, right? And I was ready to make this trade off, right? I, I said, okay, I'll use my personal money, but I want to try inviting the industry guy. So every time I teach a component, like for example, I teach K-means clustering, right? It's, it's an algorithm to do some clustering on data. I want him to explain how it's used in his medical lineup, right? Of course, it's just one industry, but I want people to kind of know what's happening, right? So I invite him and it's so cool that he said, oh, I will do a pro bono, man. And then I have another teaching assistant who's writing his research, right? This guy gets the most value because he can get the academic uh, thinking and, 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 and the industrial thinking. And then the students had a very good, uh, 
learning experience and this is one of the projects that i post in bilibili uh, for you guys because the the video is longer i cannot post it in wechat vlogs so you can have a look and it's very cool where they build the whole case study for e-manga manga is like the japanese version of comics uh, and use uh, what they learn in class to build an analytics pipeline for an engine that can discuss some characters and discuss and make some recommendation all the all built with no code just the design and use the no code platform that we teach in class to integrate or connect with each other right and i openly talk about this in 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 uh, in linkedin and even in like you see three days right we have like so many engagements and views i think it's so exciting to me right so the in the recent course in this winter i was a visiting professor for m leon and uh, what i did was because uh, for the last few years right i've been uh, having internship programs i've opened up my infrastructure to uh, enable students come uh, play with things that i built in theory right so a lot of them have been uh, now work in different countries uh, i invited i picked a few of my students one of them is chinese uh, uh, she's uh, yao mingjing she was my uh, she was working with me in in chinhua and then uh, later one of my network uh, had a position uh, like teacher though was saying uh, in in uk and he is my senior in my master degree and he's the dean of a school now uh, so so uh, i i recommended her and there's a whole process to get a european union union funding so i work with her through the life cycle so kind of like call her back to the mothership right like so i invite her back to the class and say okay uh, when you when you were the master student how did you proceed because these guys will be in that stage a few years from now two or three years from now right so i it's very interesting because when she talks about life application rejections and uh, research right it makes more sense than me inviting a full professor which is going to take a lot of effort because most full professors don't uh, uh don't uh, always want to engage with little guys like me right but but the guys who are like uh, who i trained or who i worked with or people who i uh, are known to people i work with are always almost in the same or a few years up and down to the people i'm teaching so i i i, I try to do this and i invited three speakers and it was very interesting because the students can post a uh, discussion uh, follow them on linkedin or talk to them and like one of the the, the chinese students she wants to go to the same school as yao mingjing uh, so she she sent a message to her and uh, try to connect with each other i think this is this is something i want to do so probably from now what i i learned from this experience is i don't want to invite people who are like 10 20 years senior anymore which is a very common industry trend in academics i will not do this because i think for my audience this is more meaningful so this is something i learned and experimented uh, again this is my personal perspective this works for me if it works for you you can take it or leave it right so okay so the last part right i want to talk about is very simple i want to talk about like trends and where i see myself right so th- this concept is called data democratization globally there is a increasing trends towards data democratization which means the it department which owned the data initially uh, doesn't own the data anymore because there is no value to be produced by it owning the data right so every department now starts hosting its data in successful companies and i think this trend will carry on uh, for a long long time in the in the coming time right but now the ma- base problem is the business manager maybe understands real estate maybe understands insurance but doesn't understand the dynamics of data and when he wants to make a decision with the data for the the industry that he works in it's going to be hard because he has to go communicate with the it guy despite the it guy not owning the data anymore right so i want to put the business manager here but with my teaching in the center of that action knowing that vocabulary knowing the process knowing the models and knowing the low codes to even prototype something and say oh guys i build a prototype and this is how it works i want to scale it up scale it down something like this like have a logical equal footing this is my general thinking process right and citizen development is something i'm very very interested in i think it's a is a trend that will keep growing in the coming time so so citizen development is this manager can actively engage with people with their own expertise and try to kind of like i show you in the in the in the singapore trains uh, the the transits right uh, people who are may be interested uh, or maybe want to see it as a pro bono or maybe want to do it as a gig doesn't matter i want the 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 data manager or the business manager with the problem to be able to engage with that citizen developer and put him on the center so this is my 
general perspective. And if you see, right, a lot of institutions like Microsoft, PMI, they have their own schemes uh, for certifying this kind of uh, courses, right? So where I see myself in this ecosphere is, uh, I started off as a data engineer of, in a certain sense, strong technical skills, that's where I come from as an engineer who was young. And then probably during my PhD, I, I started realizing the need for analytics and moved to that dimension. And then when I, after my PhD, when I moved to Shanghai Jauta, I think I start working on the business level where I want to see the delivery, the value produced, the, the quantification of what is the profit of getting something done. And, and probably where I want to kind of stay is in this place and where I want to lecture is in the middle that kind of complements or stays in the pyramid like that. Okay, the, the last thing I want to discuss is like the challenge for me in spring 2022. I want to teach the data structures course and the second course is already stable. We know a lot about it and we know how to improve it. But data structure course uh, is, is very special because if you see the total number of people taking courses, it's always in the double or the triple digits. But in, in the data structures course, right, because I do a survey in class last semester when I was teaching, most students start to feel that data structure is a complicated subject, which it is, right? It, it, right? So my point here is I want to kind of experiment with a design that can make it easier and a design-centered approach to learn complicated algorithm. So this is my challenge. I don't know how to do it. I'm working with the teachers uh, in, 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 in NAU, Professor Chen, to kind of figure out a middle way. He doesn't know this too because he teaches in the technical school, right? So we are trying to, for example, one example we come up with is instead of teaching students how to use an array uh, or how to use a linked list, we will teach them how to use a grocery list in the real world and convert this problem step by step on what, what happens when an item needs to be removed, uh, what happens when the item needs to be represented, right? And you want to use Python as a low code platform, so you don't have to write a lot of code to get this done. The focus essentially will be on the design, but translating of that design is not as painful as it is in C or C++, right? So this is our thinking. If you have any opinion here, you can teach me. Uh, sorry, I think I take a little bit of time. I'm a man of a uh, lot of words. Uh, so feel free to contact me. Uh, uh, I'm more than happy to share my resources. Most of my resources that I teach, like my course slides and information, like code and so on, are in the GitHub page. I share this quite regularly. Uh, other than this, if you cannot find some resource that's more latest in nature, uh, send me a message and I'm more than happy to send a personal copy for your reading. Uh, and uh, so, I want to thank you for listening. Feel free to ask me any questions if you have.